You've heard it that a number of times jobs numbers are out. Economists fear another round of weak payroll data is going to be reported on Friday. But what does all that economic talk actually mean for families searching for jobs and company growth in America? Eric Schoenberg is president and editor in chief of Inc. Magazine. He studied thousands of companies to find the real story behind the data, and he came up with a list of the best companies to work for in America. Eric, it's so nice to see you again. <laughs> Becca, it's great to be on camera with you. Yeah, it, it's it's been too long. Happy to see you at Inc. now. Um, and, and you've done some really interesting research here about the truth behind the numbers. What have you found? Well, what we found was that, look, look at it this way. We, we looked at 100,000 middle market companies. The middle market is a kind of ignored portion of the economy. It's not the big enterprise companies, and it's not the fast-growing little app makers like Kinza Health or even Waze. It's sort of the heart of the economy, where the job creation really occurs, where a lot of innovation occurs, too. And what we found there, when we surveyed 100,000 companies in this sector of the market, was only 1.5% of them were able to grow year after year after year. And it's those companies, those companies with sustainable growth, that account for an enormous amount of the job creation in the U.S. So one and a half percent of those medium-sized companies in this country are the ones that are really generating the jobs for the country. That's right. That's the heart of the economy. That's the engine of job creation. And what is the unifying trait or characteristics of these companies? Well, this was really interesting. It wasn't, I mean, you would think when you look at it that, well, it's all technology companies or it's all service companies or some hot area of the economy. But what you find is that those companies often don't sustain their growth. Hmm. So what we found was there was no geography, there was no industry that explained it all. It was really their attitude towards hiring, their attitudes towards their employees. It was a focus on soft attributes, a focus on people. A focus on people, which, uh, by the way, I think a lot of people who are listening to this are going to appreciate hearing that, especially if they're working for a company that they feel like doesn't focus on the people. <laughs> well, that's right. Well, those companies are probably leaving some money on the table because what we found was that the companies that are the most generous, that are the most conscious about things like transparency, about taking care of their employees, about being conscious of culture, actually get a real return in terms of growth. So they're doing better. To anybody who's a hiring manager out there, the companies that are doing the best in America right now are the ones who are focusing on their employees, they're focusing on the corporate culture. If you wanna look at, if you measure <laughs> doing well in America by having sustained growth year after year after year, and then we're looking back five years, which were five pretty tough years in the economy, mm -hmm. then what you said is exactly true. It's a pretty, th this is a surprise to me, Eric. Because you know you you talk to companies all the time, and you assume that it's going to be that sales were going gangbusters, and you know we hear these words supply, demand, these economic terms, but at the end of the day, there's something else here. It sounds like almost core values. Well, that's true. These companies pay a lot of attention to that. Um, let me give you an example. If, sure, if I'd I love could. That. All right. So there was a company called CPO Commerce. It is an, uh, an e-commerce site that sells power tools, and it's based in Pasadena, has a distribution center in Georgia. Um, they went through a kind of disruption that a lot of companies have. They changed their software platform, and everything blew up. Inventory was piling up in the warehouse, and uh, customers were getting upset. It took them six months to get through this, but through this six months, there was absolutely no turnover. Hmm. And what happened was that they were completely transparent with their employees about what was going on, down to you know, the inventory pileups, down to the financials. And what that did was, it told the employees, first of all, that the managers are not making this up. They could see the numbers right there. It also helped put more brain power on actually attacking the problem. So the people who were in the warehouse, people who were really kind of at the interface with the problem, could actually see how that translated to the numbers and could come up with solutions that would make the biggest difference. It's interesting because you mentioned six months. And in Wall Street's terms, six months is an eternity because all of a sudden you're at the quarterly report. And if you're being honest and transparent and saying we're going to have some slow times, that's not what any trader wants to hear. That's not what investors want to hear. No, that's right. If you have to answer to Wall Street and the, you know, the quarterly monster, it's going to be very tough to do this kind of thing. Well, it's, it's a fascinating read. Eric Schoenberg, thank you so much. Inc. Magazine, putting out fascinating stuff. My pleasure, Rebecca. Great to see you.